I gotta be honest folks, these days when a new giant AI model drops, it just doesn't feel that exciting anymore. I mean sure, the new model probably moves the needle a tiny bit higher on the benchmark scale and that's cool and all, but is it really a big achievement at this point? Now what actually gets me excited is when someone releases a tiny model, something lighter, more efficient and closer to running on everyday hardware. I'm still waiting for that day when we will have AI models small and efficient enough to run on a Raspberry Pi, but until then every meaningful step toward smaller and faster models feels like real engineering progress. I recently covered tiny models like Microsoft BitNet and Nvidia's Nemotron, but today we are looking at another family of compact efficient models, IBM's Granite 4.0 series. It seems that IBM like a phoenix has finally risen from the ashes and has established itself as a serious player in the AI space. Their latest Granite 4 models are seriously impressive. But not because they're huge, but because they're small and effective. In today's video, we're gonna look at Granite 4 models in a closer detail, see how they perform, and I will also show you an offline code completion app I built with these models, which you can run directly in your browser. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's dive into it. So Granite 4.0, this model family is built around a pretty interesting idea. Instead of relying only on the classic transformer stack, IBM mixed transformer layers with something called Mamba layers. Transformers are great at language understanding, but they get expensive as sequences get longer. Mamba layers handle long context more efficiently. And the Granite 4 models were trained with very large context windows. We are talking hundreds of thousands of tokens. That means they can actually hold entire documents, code bases, technical specs, legal contracts, or large chat histories and memory without constantly forgetting what happened earlier. For workflows like RAG, coding assistance, or research automation, that's pretty huge. But the part that stands out the most is how small some of these models are while still performing well. For example, Granite 4 Small sits at roughly 32 billion total parameters, but only 9 billion are actively used at any time because of the hybrid architecture and the use of mixture of experts. And if we compare the benchmarks, even the 3 billion parameter Granite model beats some older 8 billion parameter models from previous Granite generation. So you are getting more capacity for less compute. And these models are also cryptographically signed, their training data is documented, and the family is aligned with the ISO 42001 standards for responsible AI. And that matters if you want to deploy them inside finance or healthcare or government environments. Now from a practical standpoint, the efficiency gains are the real story. Lower memory usage means more people can run these models on smaller GPUs or even CPU optimized setups. It means faster inference, lower latency, and lower operational costs. And here's the coolest part, you can even run them locally offline in your browser using the transformers.js library. Richard already made a great video how to get started with transformers.js, so be sure to check that one out as well. But now let's see how this actually works. So IBM has made a little demo page on Hugging Face where you can test out the Granite models in the browser. So let's go ahead and test it out with the smallest model, the 350 million parameter Granite Nano. As soon as we open the chat window, we see there are given examples we can try out. Most of these are using the tool functionality, which is a pretty cool feature. If we open the tools panel, we can see that there's a bunch of tools that the model applies based on the context of the prompt. And what's even cooler is that you can modify the response object to be a neatly formatted React component with styling and everything. So for example, if I ask what time it is, it will immediately call the get time tool and output the response in a neat React component. It's kind of similar to the MCP UI library on which James made an excellent overview in this video. Okay, so this model can also call tools, which is awesome, but let's see what its knowledge cutoff is. So if we prompt to ask who is the current US president, 
you will see that it replies with some outdated information. And that's because this model was trained back in 2023. So for some newer information, it might be a bit outdated. But nonetheless, it's quite impressive to have such a fast, tiny model running entirely on your browser. For a final test, let's give it a bunch of data and see if it can format it in a JSON format. As you can see, it's doing a pretty fast job of converting it to JSON, but because of the token limit on the demo page, we will see it cut off the response by the fourth customer. This is easily fixable, however, if you're building your own AI agent, we can just provide a larger token limit. Okay, so I was thinking, in what kind of scenario would a browser-based offline AI model be useful? And then I realized a pretty cool tool would probably be an offline AI coding completion assistant, which you can use to do coding offline, like for example, when you're traveling on a plane. So I decided to build a little proof of concept AI coding assistant app that works offline, uses the transformer JS library and the Granite AI model behind the scenes. So this is the app and when you first load it, it will download the model to your local cache and store it for future offline use. And now we can actually turn off my internet connection and then try this app in offline mode. So now if I write a function called add with parameters num1 and num2, we can see that the model now suggests adding the exact next line. And if I press tab, it will apply that suggestion to my code. And this is all happening locally on my M2 MacBook with no internet connection. How cool is that? And we can see that if we go to the next line, it will also suggest to add the closing bracket as well. And now if I add an examples comment line, look at that. The model understands we want to include some samples of that function. This is some solid AI code completion right there. Let's try another example. Let's see if we can write a Fibonacci sequence function. And look at that. It suggested the entire Fibonacci code block and applied recursion as well. And once again, if we ask for examples, it will suggest some additional console logs. Now, I do have to say it is not perfect. Sometimes it suggests the same code line as you just wrote. And sometimes it forgets to include the closing bracket. So this is still very much a proof of concept. But the very idea that I can use a local AI model offline to create an AI coding assistant, that's pretty cool. Lastly, I wanna show you what the code for this little app looks like. Oh, and by the way, folks, if you wanna clone this project and try it on your own, I've also included the GitHub repo link in the description below. So on the coding side, we have this simple HTML page with the code text area component. And on the main.js file, we are loading in the Granite for 1 billion parameter model. I also tried the 350 million parameter version but that one was too unreliable for this project. Then we load in the tokenizer and the model to our cache, and we use a four bit quantization because this is the amount that was recommended by IBM for this particular model version. Next, here's a very detailed prompt telling the agent to only output the next suggested lines of code, and we are using a 128 token limit although we could easily increase this for longer suggestions if we wanted to. And I also found that setting temperature to one worked best for this project. And then we get the raw response from the model and I also add some helper functions to clean up the response, to remove any textual non-code artifacts. And then we throttle this function to happen after a second every time we stop typing. It then shows the suggestion and then we listen for a key down event for tab. And if tab is pressed, we append the suggestion to the current code. And lastly, if we click outside of the suggestion element, it just hides the suggestion. So that's basically it. I honestly really like the new IBM's models, despite all their little inconsistencies. You can really feel that they have battle tested this model to be as stable and secure as possible. And the fact that they've open sourced them for everyone to use on their own projects is super cool. And these models are also small enough for us to actually use them on our own projects without needing a beefy GPU. So overall, great job IBM. But those are just my two cents. What do you folks think? Are you planning to use these models in your own future projects? Let us know in the comments down below. And folks, if you like these types of technical breakdowns, be sure to smash that like button underneath the video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This has been Andres from BetterStack and I will see you in the next videos.